Hello, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond. My name is Taylor, and this is the brand new side-scrolling Metroidvania, Marco Beyond Brave. Now, uh, for full disclosure, I did receive a key from Press Engine, as well as the developer slash publisher, uh, Studio Mecha, so thank you to Studio Mecha and Press Engine for the code. As usual, I will not let that affect my review of the game, and unfortunately, I, I have some nice things to say about this one, but it really kind of missed its mark. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, that would be a terrible joke. Um, recently, I've been getting more into kind of the side-scrolling Metroidvania, you know, action platform genre, which obviously is a very well-established one, but not one that I have too much experience with. I tried games like Hollow Knight and a few others, and it just doesn't always click with me. It really has to be the right one. Uh, recently, I've been playing and finished Tales of Kinzura Zhao, and I played a little bit of the new Prince of Persia The Lost Crown game. Now, I want to stress that I understand those are two games from much larger publishers slash developers, being EA's Originals titles and Ubisoft, uh, so I am not comparing them in terms of quality to Marco by any means, but I do think they present some important lessons that I'll get to in a bit. So, as you've been seeing on screen, uh, Marco is a side-scrolling Metrovania where you play as the titular Marco, a man with a magnificent mustache, to be fair. Uh, and it takes place in a Slavic town based on Slavic folklore where you're trying to slay a Hydra. You and two of your other vi fellow villagers uh, go, they unfortunately die, you are kind of saved slash resurrected because of your bravery in trying to defeat the monster, and so your goal is to now build up more strength to finally slay it once and for all. Now, there is a little bit of dialogue here and there in the form of text boxes, nothing spoken, and honestly, I had a... I had a lot of trouble kind of connecting what the, you know, kind of deeper points of the story were. I understood that, yes, I want to get stronger to slay the monster, but I didn't necessarily know how to do that. So I got out of the first dungeon and walked around the town a bit, met some of the NPCs, like, okay, I see where this is going. People will sell me uh, attacks or items or upgrade my newly found sword. And then I have to go into other dungeons through either the well, the mine, or other places and defeat the boss monsters there. All right, you know, fine, simple, makes sense. That's where I hit the snag, though, in the sense that I was trying to do all this, and I was getting very, very lost. Now, I don't think a game needs to hold your hand, needs to tell you exactly where to go at all times, but the problem I had was I didn't know where to go, and I kept getting stuck. Like, there was one area that I thought I could get to around some lava, but couldn't make the jump. There was another area that I tried to get to that was blocked off by an enemy that I couldn't figure out how to hit. And because I couldn't defeat either of these obstacles and there was no indications to how to do so, I was getting really frustrated. Combine that with the almost kind of floaty jumping mechanics, which never felt great in the sense that you could, you know, hold A to jump for longer, which makes sense. But I never felt like I jumped at a precise moment and made the jump because of my own ability, I always felt like I collided with the bottom or side of the platform and the game just decided whether it would or wouldn't let me up. So it was really frustrating to kind of experience that that uncertainty and that almost floatiness in the, in the movement, which is supposed to be really precise in a platformer like this one. I also had an issue with the enemy encounters where they just, there was no hit feedback. I could tell that I was hitting them because they were flashing red, but there was no indication that I was doing a lot of damage. And they also take like three, two hits, which is just never fun when they feel that tanky for no apparent reason. Even after I upgraded my sword once, they were still taking the same number of hits. And there's no, it didn't feel good in combat because again, you're hitting them, but they're not moving back. There's no reaction outside of that red flash, and your character moves back a little bit. And then they just walk into you and hit you with, again, minimal hit feedback out of a side of a little controller vibration, and your character flashing with invincibility for a second or two. Like, there was nothing there that felt impactful, and it led to a lot of cheap-feeling deaths that I didn't really appreciate, so that was frustrating me. And circling back to the whole navigation, so... You're having trouble navigating, you're having trouble with the combat, with the jumping, because it all just feels that slight bit off, and it just it kind of culminates in this frustration of, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm not invested enough to want to try to figure it out, because it's just kind of annoying me. This is why I brought up games like uh, Zhao and Prince of Persia, is they have really good hit feedback. You can tell when you've hit an enemy, you can tell the impact that it's had based on how they've moved or how they've reacted, 
as well as the exploration. Zhao features a map similar to Marco, but with Zhao, it told me, okay, here is your objective. It just a general marker to say, hey, this is where you should be going. Figure out how to get there. And I know some people don't like the little comments that a character makes like, oh, I should go get this power up or oh, I shouldn't be here yet. But those exist for a reason. I couldn't tell when I was going in the right direction or the wrong direction specifically because there was nothing to indicate that, hey, this is the wrong way or I don't have a power up yet that I might need. So a little more signposting, a little more just, hey, here's a gentle guide would have gone a long way into easing that frustration. Now again, I understand this is an indie game. It was a crowdfunded game uh, back from 2021, I believe, but just released on September 18th of 2024. And I don't know if I can recommend it. You know, I tried to play a bit. I did get through about half an hour before getting stuck and just getting frustrated with it. Um, you can see and read some reviews like I did online where people were just saying, the animations look really good. I love his mustache. I love the, the way the character looks, but everything else just doesn't feel like it had the time it needed to really feel like a good game. I still fall back on this one quote that a good game is one that focuses on one thing, doing one thing well, and then everything else kind of fall into place around that central mechanic. Now, this game naturally is an action platform. That should have been the one thing you do well, have good action, have good platforming. And when those two feel that slight bit off, you don't have the hit feedback you want, you don't have the precision and the jumps that you want, and you can never tell if you're gonna make that jump because the game just decides you will or you won't, it really, puts the player off, in a sense, and this game, as of time of recording, retails for $25.36 Canadian, uh, or your original equivalent, I would assume that's around $23, $24 US, and I don't think I can recommend it in its current state, just because it doesn't feel good to play. It doesn't feel fun, you know, and I was really looking forward to kind of this indie, stylized Metroidvania, which, now that I say that is a dime a dozen, but... You know, just another one is never a bad thing, because it gives another developer a chance to really shine, but I don't know if this was their best effort. I, and I mean, admittedly, I don't have a lot of experience with the genre, I'm not very good, and I fully recognize that I got frustrated and gave up on trying, but at the same time, the game's gotta meet me halfway, the game's gotta give me a reason to care and want to go back to keep trying, which this one unfortunately did not. So I am curious to see kind of what the studio does later on in the future, maybe if they try to take on other Slavic folktales or folktales from other countries and cultures to see what they can do with that. But I do feel like this game was not a great showing by them in terms of the game feeling specifically. Again, the animation, the art style was really cool. I loved the mustache. I loved the reactivity of it. But it didn't come through in the gameplay, and I think that's the one of the biggest sins a game can make is not feeling good, not being fun for the player. You can have an almost non-existent storyline as long as your game is fun. So I don't think this is a bad game, but I really don't think it's a good game per se in the sense that again, it's, just, it's not fun and it, it feels more frustrating than it has to. So that's gonna be it for my review for Marco Beyond the Brave. I am, I'm sadly disappointed with this one. I don't like, you know, kind of belittling or talking down to indie projects by any means, or any game, because I know a lot of hard work went into this, but I do feel like I should be more honest with my criticisms of some things, and there's just, there's a lot more bad than there is good here. With that being said, thank you, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between on so much for being here. Let me know what you think of the footage, if you're willing to check out Marco Beyond the Brave, or if you've kind of seen it or were interested in it, or if this is the first time hearing about it. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. I've got a couple more games on the dock ready to come out hopefully sometime soon in October, uh, but we'll see about that one. With all that in mind, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.